call the Tuesday, September 12 work session to order of the Portsmouth City Council. And this is the year 2017, of course. And Madam Clerk, would you uh, call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Cherry? Here. Mr. Clark? Here. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Here. Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Dr. Whitaker? Present. Mayor Rowe? Here. And Dr. Patton? Yes, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of City Council. Our first presentation this evening, Mrs. Ellis Kelly, the Chief Financial Officer, will review the preliminary unaudited FY 2017 year in budget results and a reconfirmation of the city's bond ratings. The city's audit is underway since June and final results for all the city's funds are anticipated to be presented during the November 28th public work session. With the second presentation, Mr. James Wright, City Engineer, will provide the Churchland Bridge Replacement Project update. The Churchland Bridge is a very important transportation asset for residents of the region, state government, and the U.S. military. The bridge carries over 30,000 vehicles a day. It provides preliminary access for regional employment, school, retail, health care centers, and for emergency service responders. The bridge is a part of the BDOC hurricane evacuation route and is part of the Department of Defense Strategic Highway Network. <coughs> Mrs. Kelly. I don't know if Deborah not being here. She'll get, where, where does she go? She walked out of the... She's got to get it connected. The, the remote control. <coughs> That's the You're going to have to go back to your first frame. Go back to your first one. This one. Right there. So this is the one with click, right? Yeah, that'll go for Okay. Oh, it just takes a minute. Mayor Rowe, Vice Mayor Cherry, City Council members. Um, before we get into the FY 2017 budget review results, I'd like to inform you that Moody's Investor <coughs> Service just informed us this week that they performed a credit check on the city and that they confirmed the city's AA2 rating. Typically, the city is rated by bond rating agencies when we go to the market to sell bonds or if a major financial event occurs. But currently, in the past few years, rating agencies have been using our published information budgets and audits to review the financial condition of the cities and confirming ratings and providing a report to investors and the city. This was just done, and we received a draft report a couple of days ago, which confirmed our rating, our AA2 rating, which is a strong investment grade rating. Key credit factors Moody's mentioned were included a, a healthy fund financial position, a good fund balance, a considerable tax base, and an adequate socioeconomic profile. Some of the challenges Moody's noted was our high debt level. We have a debt of, two, of $582 million. We have a current debt service level of $51 million a year. And we also have a high pension level. Our pension liability is $132 million. And just as a reminder, on slide on this slide, I show um, the credit ratings agencies, the Moody's, Standard & Poor, and Fitch. And I just wanted to point out that Moody's has a slightly different uh, alphanumeric rating system, but it is the same as a AA rating for Standard & Poor and Fitch. And so we were very pleased to have that announcement, or that, and we will get a final report this week from them. Um, for preliminary year-end results, we, we, I'd like to remind Council that the numbers are projected and unaudited, and they reflect the estimated year-end balances as of June 30th and any known adjustments that needed to occur. 
for the city's FY2017 year to date revenue. We have we're 99% of our budget or 1% under our budgeted revenue. And that year to date expenditures are 97% of our budget or about 3% under our budget. For you know, obviously the city had budget variances, and I'd like to point out some of our larger variances. Revenue shortfalls from the budget included our personal property tax. And as you recall, the city estimated this tax would be $1.7 million lower for the agreement between the state and VIG. The bridge loan document is being worked on for city council's consideration in the next few weeks. Also, there were some significant re tax refunds that we had in this category. Ambulance fees were slightly lower than budget as we increased the allowance to more appropriately reflect collection and we also had to post an audit adjustment to correct the beginning accounts receivable balances. General district court revenue, some other taxes including sales and use tax and machinery and tools tax were also lower than our budget. Our revenue was exceeded in real estate tax, restaurant food tax, investment income, penalty and other charges, and state law enforcement. So overall, our revenue budget was $2 million under budget. For our expenditures, departments were asked to review, reflect, refocus, and restore. <coughs> and as part of this process, most general fund departments were able to achieve a 5 to 10% budget savings. However, there were some unbudgeted expenditures that occurred. Some were mentioned in the third quarter review. Hurricane Matthew and Hurricane or Snowstorm Helena cost about $471,000. A further increase in fire overtime occurred. The retirement supplement and an increase in senior citizen disabled veterans tax relief that was higher than budget. And then we also had the violence and crime reversal assessment from we paid ODU for about 45,000. Those were some of the unexpected, unplanned expenditures for the year. As per city code, the city is required to report all budget transfers over $50,000 to city council, and then city council has to approve any transfer over $100,000. Since March 31st, there had been no transfers over $50,000, and the only transfer over $100,000 that is being requested for your approval tonight is the transfer to the fire department to cover overtime and benefit uh, overages. Some reasons for this transfer include an increase in vacancies and not having vehicles being taken out of the service. As of today, we estimate that the total impact to unassigned fund balance is flat for FY 2017. Both revenue and expenditures are lower than budget, and the use of budgeted fund balance is about the same as the increase to the fund balance at year end. As the bridge loan from the state has not been received, the revenue from that will have to be recorded in FY18. So we started out with fund balance of 58.4, and we estimate that we'll end at 58.2 in fund balance. For FY2018, the city continues to monitor federal legislative issues such as possible repeal of the Affordable Care Act, possible cuts to HUD and transportation funding. In addition, in FY 2018, there are certain revenue and expense accounts that are being analyzed, including VDOT revenue. The maintenance revenue to be received will be slightly lower as VDOT conducted statewide road classification audits and Portsmouth had a few road classification changes. Our overtime for public safety, both fire and police, is still high as we work on filling vacancies. Our public utility revenue will be reduced by the Chesapeake contract. Debt service expenses will be under because um, we are not going to, we don't anticipate borrowing anything except for the QZABs that will be issued. However, each of these impacts are being offset by strategically working to review, reflect, and refocus, and even restore some issues to offset these impacts and create cost savings and efficiencies. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? <coughs> yes. What is the Chesapeake Public Utility contract? Um, a few weeks ago, a month ago, we um, extended our Chesapeake contract with the department, um, the utility de uh, department extended our, the Chesapeake's water department. I'm sorry, I'm not explaining that very well. There was a, a contract with Chesapeake. We extended that contract, which will extend the life of the contract, but in the meantime, the first few years of it will be a little bit lower revenue. And so we're working on making sure that that doesn't have an impact to rates. Yes, sir. Is this a Kuzak 
QZAP. QZAP. What, 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 what for and how much? Um, they would be about $4.1 million. They're for the, the projects that are uh, for the educational projects in the C city CIP. Um, there are three projects that the schools has from their, um, their um, appropriation from FY17 that we're putting in the city CIP projects. And then we have a few other projects that have been uh, approved in FY18 that um, we can finance through QZAP bonds. And so we'll be bringing back to council that uh, request in the next few weeks, uh, September 26th, 25th, that 25th. Next, next council meeting. The, the, the oh, I'm sorry. Public work is 25th, 26th is the We have to have a two-week public notice, so it's not. Of the smart, smart boards was one. Yes, yes. Did I see a hand up over here? Yes, yes, sir. The the overtime issue with the um, <coughs> public safety, fire and police. Uh, can we get, if there's no objection from council, can we get um, a report, a more detailed report on why um, these uh, increases in overtime mm -hmm. that we're seeing, and um, if if within that report we can have some idea of positions that are um, being filled, sure. positions that are open. Um, where persons are uh, working in those different uh, departments uh, so that we can get a close examination of what's going on with that overtime issue. Am I okay with that? Okay. Yeah. Is it clear? Okay. Uh, any other questions? Just one question. The over budgeted items, um, specifically the um, investment income. Yes. How do we recoup? I mean, how do we? make up for that? It's over budget and it's a revenue, so over budget's a good thing. So um, we had budgeted a, a lower amount than our investment. And that has to do with cash flow and, and how much money we had available to invest. And interest rates actually are rising a little bit, so we are getting a little bit more. On, on the uh, general district court revenue, what, uh, uh, what drove that number? Uh, we had budgeted a lot of um, revenue for toll um, uh, expenses, of uh, toll um, charges that didn't come back to us to to uh, to issue in court. Toll charges. I'm, I'm sorry. Toll. Yeah. Oh, okay. kind of charges. Yeah. So the penalties. The penalties, were, right? Right. So we. Right. And so they hadn't come there. back to the court, so we didn't have the the fees come back to us. These are the ERC cases that they right. take. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Other other so it, it's but it impacted our revenue. Man, man, I don't answer this, but uh, personal property was that was that uh, that delinquencies or? Uh, or um, really, the commissioner of revenue would have to really give you more of the Pretty detail of that. Yes. But what we can tell from it is the is the state and the VIG have lowered that personal property, as well as some refunds that we had to issue, and so that's why that was uh, two point six million. Any other questions Just on the one, one last yes, one. No, no, no. no. The uh, machinery and tool tax, was that the loss from the ports or is that from people who, I, businesses I, who didn't? I couldn't tell you that. The Commissioner of Revenue would have to really okay. be a little bit more detail on that. So it's Green's on machine. On retail tool. sales nationwide, mm -hmm. um, more and more people are shopping online. Do you think that our reduction is a reflection of that trend? Yes, and most mm -hmm. cities are seeing, a, especially in the state of Virginia, it are is. seeing that sales and use tax go down. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. This may have been asked. Um, the uh, restaurant food tax. Yes. Um, that increase uh, is that something that is increased over past budgets? Or are, are we still below where we used to be, or is this higher than where we used to be? Um, we're higher than last year's. I'm, I'm, I don't know the history of it, and I can. Well, I, I was just curious with the with the toll issue. Um, down and is this representing a rebound? Sure. Um, we're working on a five-year financial plan too and we will get the history of that and bring it back to council the next few months. With what Dr. Whitaker just asked, could we have a five-year history of the sales and use tax <coughs> and of the restaurant food tax? We can. Just a little sure. bar chart we'll comparison. Question. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mr. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and while we're getting that information, I think it would be good to see the percentage of delinquencies uh, relative to the uh, restaurant food tax and, and the. Uh, uh, I know we can't get specifics, I guess, but we can we can get a, a, a total number uh, a figure for delinquencies. We will inquire and get what, bring right. back what we can get from and the, the number treasurer. Of, number of days delinquent. Okay. On your first slide, uh, the good news about uh, maintaining our, our strong uh, credit mm -hmm. rating. Do you do you anticipate S and P and Fitch? Um, implementing a off-year examination? Um, they, they have all said they were going to be doing it. Um, we were a little bit surprised that they did it without telling us until they got the report. And I, I received a call from Moody saying, I want to confirm your email address, and sent us this draft report last week. So um, they, it does seem to be a trend that the, the rating agencies are doing that once a year. Yes, and Mayor, I would like to follow up with saying once um, the finance um, department received that information, they are given a short window of time to respond and get that information back. In fact, they actually had... How well, they gave us one day and we asked day. for a couple more days just to double one check day. all their numbers one and day. make sure that to their get numbers and are answer all of their questions as it pertains to those areas of which she called to your attention. You're working on the CAFR, you said, and yes. we expect to get that in December, is that it? November 28th is what we are scheduled to bring it to council, and we're working very hard with that. Good. Any other questions? Yes, yes, sir. And the highest rating is what, AAA? AAA. AAA. Mm -hmm. You go back to the, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a AAA. Well, good job on maintaining our Right away. That's everybody's. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, Dr. Patton. Mr. Wright, we'll come forward with the Churchill and Bridge replacement project update. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the City Council. Here to give you an update on the Church and Bridge Replacement Project. This project will replace the existing northbound span, Churchland Bridge, carrying High Street over western over the western branch of the Elizabeth River. This span has been found to be structurally deficient and uses an obsolete pin and hanger design element. Ashto and FHWA have recommended that the removal of bridges with this design element. A primary justification for this project is to improve safety of the traveling public by reducing the risk of catastrophic bridge failure. This project also includes the rehabilitation of the southbound span, and in addition to improving the safety of the river crossing, the new bridge will add new mobility options for residents as it will include a 14-foot multi-use path. High Street, in, High Street in, including the Church and Bridge, has been uh, designated by the city as a multi-use, multi-modal multi corridor, and the city plans to complete a number of projects of bike and walkway improvements in this corridor concurrently with the bridge replacement project. So, the total estimated cost for the bridge project is $35.5 million. <coughs> they have a contribution of just over 62%, and the local contribution is about 37.6%. So we are currently uh, in final plan review, uh, working through permitting and right-of-way issues. Um, a major component of this project is the verification and relocation of utilities as needed. Some utility work will occur prior to construction with the remainder occurring during construction. The current issue um, that we're trying to work our way through is that the project team is working with NYSource to verify the location of a high-pressure gas main near the bulkhead for the channel marker to determine impacts during construction. Permitting. For bridge projects, one agency becomes the lead federal agency after pre-application meeting for the project. The coordination of federal clearances certification and concurrence for various agencies 
flow through the permit process for the lead agency. The U.S. Coast Guard is the, is the federal lead agency for this project. Once affirmation is received for, from their federal partners, then they issue a permit. The U.S. Army Corps of Ears the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers will issue their permit once the Coast Guard issues, issues theirs. Um, the permit application for this project was submitted in October, but due to staffing turnover and workload, uh, we were recently asked by the Coast Guard to have our environmental coordinator coordinate with other federal agencies to basically get through this process. Um, and since they've made that request, uh, those certifications and concurrences have been flowing in steadily in the weeks since. So, as you can see, there are a number of agencies and federal acts involved. You see 12 agencies involving 17 acts or executive orders that you need to get uh, concurrence or uh, affirmation for. Um, as far as state permits goes, the city has received this permit from VMRC, uh, VDHR, Department of Historic Resources, and the Department of Environmental Quality have indicated that they will provide concurrence for the bridge project. So, um, this project is a locally administered project. Um, what that means is projects with either state or federal funds that are administered by the locality. Um, VDOT provides a project manual for guidance and training opportunities throughout the year for project personnel. Um, the majority of the projects that we have going on in our city uh, as they relate to transportation issues are actually this type of project, um, with Turnpike Road and MLK project actually being VDOT control projects, all other projects being controlled by the city. Um, as a funding partner, VDOT provides, and provides reviews at various stages to ensure compliance with state and federal requirements so that the project can receive reimbursement and they will have limited oversight during construction. So, where we currently are, um, we anticipate a fall winter advertisement with construction in the spring. Um, it's a two year construction period. Um, traffic shifts will, tra will place all traffic one way in each direction on a single span. For the uh, southbound lanes re rehabilitation, certain work required on this span will be required prior to shifting traffic on it. Um, the major, the majority of this work will be underneath the bridge. Uh, for those portions of the work impacted by, by vibrations from traffic, that'll cause the traffic to shift over to northbound lanes. Um, the northbound replacement, approximately an 18 month traffic shift to the southbound lanes. Um, once we get to the advertising point, we'll set up a project link on the city website so that uh, citizens can get updates and information on the project. Um, with that, I'll take any questions. Questions? You're doing rehab on the southbound lanes first. Correct. About three months. About three months more. Um, I know the city is managing you using contractors uh, from within the city or all of you? Um, so as, as part of the process um, to, to set up the template, um, we have several firms under annual services contracts. Um, and we did um, a sort of targeted RFP between those groups and interviewed them and selected the best group to help us manage that project. Just so it turns out the same group is going to help us manage this project, manage the Dominion Boulevard project. Given all the highway construction that's going on in Hampton Roads, do you see any problems um, as far as motors are concerned? I'm sorry? Given the great amount of highway construction that's going on in Hampton Roads, do you see any problems on getting bidders' interest in this project? Um, I'm not necessarily sure there be problems. Um, there are going to be challenges, um, specifically with traffic control um, and, and coordination with other projects that are in the, that are in the area. So um, we're going to have to take a lot of detail to work through the MOT plans for this project and then coordinate that with every other project that's going on to make sure citizens are aware of what routes are available to them so that they can try to minimize those, those delays to their travel. And we estimate 18 months, but uh, weather, weather and winter will have impact on our project. So we say 18 months, but we know that that may end up being 21 months or 21. 20 months based on the weather. Could you speak also, uh, Mr. Uh, Wright, on over the past how you have engaged the public in letting them know far in advance this this project was coming? So I remember um, you hosted the meeting. So we hosted um, one meeting at Bideway when the project was first kicking off as sort of a general information meeting. 
um, as required uh, through by the LAP process. Once the project was at the 60% uh, plan stage, we had another public meeting um, uh, at By the Way, and then we had a one, I think a week after, at the Churchland Library. And so uh, the information um, has gone out to the public on three separate occasions about this project. Uh, the project team has discussed once the, plan once the project is advertised and we have a signed contract to have another meeting. Uh, that, that'll give citizens information about the project website and allow them to ask any other questions about the actual construction process um, that we'll be getting ready to embark on. What project, what bridge replacement project is next in line and what's the status of that project? For us, it's Paradise Creek. Um, we're doing the preliminary engineering report at the moment. Um, we have funding for design. Uh, we'll be, we attempted to get funding through several uh, state, state programs uh, within the past, say, 18 months or so. We were unsuccessful. Um, those uh, programs are, are coming back up and so we'll go back out and try to get funding to complete that process. So. Uh, yes, Bill. Realistically, on that project that the mayor mentioned, Paradise Creek, uh, what's a general timetable when, when they can be expected to be at least uh, construction? Um, I, I think we just, and then go with my memory now, um, 2019, I think, is for construction to start. Uh, that's an 18-month project. Will it last that long? Will it last that long? Um, that one's a little bit more tricky just because of the way you have to build that bridge and so it may actually last a little bit longer than that. So um, you don't have the luxury of uh, putting traffic on another span. Churchland Bridge has one federal ID number but it's actually two separate bridges. You have 1950 Bridge and 1974 Bridge whereas Paradise Creek is just one bridge. And so uh, that's some of the decisions that we'll have to make during the design of how to actually construct it and handle traffic uh, while the project's ongoing, so. Other questions? At the same time, Mayor, we're gonna have to make sure, and, and I shared in my opening remarks, um, the many um, entities that use this bridge every day. When it goes down to one span and 30,000 cars coming through a day, people going to school, school buses, it's a lot of adjusting of how people um, gauge their time to get to where they want to go. And it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be an inconvenience if you have to come that way, but there are other ways that you could get to where you're going. But we're gonna just you know keep the public informed and uh, it, it's gonna be about an 18 to 20 month time period with us having that one swing. In this presentation, you mentioned that the Churchland Bridge is a critical component of the federal highway system, the defense highway network. Yes. Doesn't that also apply to Paradise Creek? What, can we make that argument? Yes, it is. It's part of Straw Night as well. And it's, a, it's been designated? Yes, sir. You're looking for the money. There's still no state funding? Not yet. Well, there's revenue sharing that's at some state, but not as much as I like. And we'll have an opportunity to go yes, back out to request again, and we will. Other questions about this project, which is a big deal? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Pat. <coughs> um, Mir, you have two um, report backs in front of you. Uh, the first is uh, during last night's public work session, there was a question on the manner of payments to Portsmouth Public Schools. And I'm reporting back that since 2014, the city has transferred one third of the quality, qu quarterly appropriation to Portsmouth Public Schools on a monthly basis. You have before you, and it's highlighted on page three, that on May 9th, 2017, in the city manager's report title, FY 2018 operating CIP budget ordinance, reference to um, the last page highlighted, of which the transferring of funds is stated, and we are following the process in which um, City Council approved. The second report so back. I have a question. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you, you said since 2014, can you say that again? Since 2014, the um, process in which the one-third, one-third has been paid. That has been since 2014, and this is 17. 
You said a one third, one third. What, what's the one third? That's two thirds. What are you following on that? The payments that we're paying quarterly are the 4.2 million that they get a month. The 112. 112. Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And you said that's been since 2014. So the what, research. What was done prior to 2014? I don't know. Uh, I, I would have to research that. Can I don't. Let, can you let us? Know? I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll get have to research that and get it back to you through an email. Uh, the second, last night uh, we had a um, question regarding the um, Cedar Grove uh, Cemetery fence, and I have a report back on that, and tonight um, that item, which I will go over shortly with you, comes for your report approving the uh, uh, funds that have come in. Um, we have funding for, um, in the CIP, that we are going to uh, combine with the funds that we've gotten uh, from the damages of um, Hurricane Matthew. And so we are looking to be able to um, <coughs> complete and possibly, and this is what the um, uh, Cemetery Association is asking, that we will put the raw down fence to match what they had already started, thereby opening up the cemetery. Okay. All right, if at this time, uh, can, Mayor can Mills. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, at that cemetery, you said the Cemetery Association. Mm -hmm. So, that's a, is that a city-owned? That's a city-owned cemetery. That is a city-owned. Yeah, it's a city-owned cemetery. So, who is the who is this association? Um, it's the Cedar Grove Foundation. Foundation. It's a not-for-profit. Okay. Uh, and so they're responsible for some maintenance of it. And no, we maintain the cemetery. The cities maintain the cemetery in terms of cutting the grass and, and that kind so of what thing. So what was the issue with the wrought iron fence? Here? There's not an issue with the wrought iron fence. There is a, the cemetery wall has fallen down. Right. It's gone since Matthew. We're going to replace the wall. We now have the money, which will be before you all to prove the night, tonight. In the wall that fell down was a um, red brick wall. And so what we are looking and considering is to um, extending the um, wrought iron fence, which is right there, you can see it, from um, Effingham, and extending it all the way around where um, there's no fence at this time. But in your report, and I'm going to ask Mr. Wright to come back up for a minute, there are some critical items that, um, well, not items, critical issues that have to be addressed that pertains to two graves. So the city, so the city put in that fence in originally. Well, that fence has probably been there since 1800. Yeah, I mean it's. I, I was old. curious. If, I don't know if it was done by private funds or were those, was that fence built by the city? That's that's. So it goes. I don't. The fence was there since the 1800s. So it's been. I mean, the wall has been there. The city started that cemetery in 1832, 32. Mm -hmm. and it's always been a city cemetery. Uh, that wall is quite old mm -hmm. and just north of the area where it fell the wall is is both a brick wall and wrought iron um, structure on top mm -hmm. of the brick wall mm -hmm. and so what the foundation has suggested is that they just p pick up that theme and carry it south no i was just curious whose wall it is is it the city's wall or the foundation's it's wall it's ours iron. the city's wall yeah. It's the city's wall. Well, I thought we didn't know who built it. That's why I was curious who built it. Well, the cemetery was, the wall was built probably 1832. The city has been in charge of the cemeteries. I was in charge of cemeteries in 1986, so it predates me. Okay. okay. Thank you. But, uh, to, to follow up on the uh, association, what, what's the history of the association and what, what part do they play in the operation of the cemetery? Well, I, I would can, have to. I, I can answer yeah, that. Yeah, I can say it was founded 11 years ago. It's a not-for-profit, 501c3. Um, they do maintenance of monuments and, and structures. Um, being 1832 and, and the type of material that people use for headstones, they deteriorate on their own and they may crumble. And what they do is go back and repair it. Okay. 
At this time, Mayor, if there are no other questions, I'll go through um, the um, city manager's report items. Tonight, uh, in the city manager's report, uh, you have 12 items, and this is the most that uh, we have had in um, uh, some time. Five of these items have been thoroughly discussed, and they are the uh, five uh, um, CMRs for the reappropriation of the um, um, Portsmouth Public Schools reappropriations. Uh, I'll start with the CSA supplemental funds. You have before you an adoption of an ordinance tonight accepting um, the Child Services Act supplemental funding of $189,394. This money comes from the Virginia Department of Social Ser Services and it goes into the Children's Service Act Fund. That fund is a service that is designed to identify and intervene early with uh, young children and their families who are at risk of developing emotional or behavioral problems. And social services, behavioral health care, the communities, um, the local uh, court services, uh, and the Department of Health all work together in addressing um, issues through the CSA uh, supplemental funds. The next is the Local Emergency Management Program grant. Uh, it's adoption of an ordinance accepting a local emergency program grant in the amount of $57,992 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating that said into um, the grants fund for use for the Department of Fire and Rescue and emergency um, services for emergency management, purchase of emergency management equipment, supplies, and training. The next is the adoption of an ordinance accepting a radiological emergency preparedness program funding in the amount of $3,500. And the purpose of the radiological emergency preparedness program is to support activities of local emergency management agencies in establishing and maintaining the operation of emergency plans in case there is any nuclear accident. So this is what uh, would be a monitor that this would go for. The next is an adoption of an ordinance confirming a transfer of 266604 from the non-departmental salary employment bonus line item of the FY 2017 general fund budget to the public safety category of the FY 27 general fund budget to fund overtime and benefit costs for the Department of Fire, Rescue and Emergency Service inc incurred in FY 2017. Um, the next is the um, Virginia Department of Emergency Management Hurricane uh, Matthew Cedar Grove Cemetery <coughs> Wall Project, adoption of an ordinance accepting public assistance grant revenue in the amount of $87,272.34 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, better known as FEMA for reimbursement of costs to repair the Cedar Grove Cemetery necessitated by Hurricane Matthew. The next five uh, are um, the uh, CMRs for the school, and I will give their titles. Um, the Increased Capital Improvement Fund Education to Add Three School Projects. The Grant Fund, Portsmouth Public Schools PPS reappropriation of FY 2017 unspent grant funds. The General Fund reappropriation request for Portsmouth Public Schools for FY 2017 unassigned general fund balances, net position of risk management funds, and the General Fund encompasses as of June 30th, 2017. The textbook fund, Portsmouth Public Schools reappropriation of FY 2017 unused test textbook funds. And lastly, the fifth would be the risk management fund reappropriation of FY 2017 preliminary net position into the FY 2018 Portsmouth Public Schools risk management fund. The next is the jail mental health program grant adoption of an ordinance accepting jail mental health program grant funding in the amount of 939,435 awarded by the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services and administered by the Hampton Roads Regional Jail and appropriating said amount into the FY 2018 grants fund for use by the Department of Behavioral Health Care Services to fund therapy and case management services at the regional jail. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council, if you remember, this was a competitive grant of which the uh, state government 
based on uh, some challenges with mental um, ill inmates in jails across um, the state. There were um, over uh, 30 something applicants. They had indicated that they would only fund six and the city of Portsmouth working with um, the Hampton Roads Regional Jail with Sherry Neal taking the lead in the entire process. We were one of the six cities awarded. The program is up and operating and um, uh, making an impact in uh, the Hampton Regional Jail. Adoption of a resolution to approve the FY 2018 performance contract for the Department of Behavioral Health Care Services. Part of the state's responsibility in uh, cities receiving funds for the Department of Behavioral Health Care Services is to enter into a performance contract. The city must approve the performance contract in order to receive allocations of state and federal funds from the um, DBHS. DBHDS Office of Support Services. The projected state and federal allocations for fiscal year FY 2018 are 5.3 million and 1.2 million for a total of 6.4 million or 6.5 million. The city is required to give um, PDBHS a minimum of 10% of the uh, local or total budget match. That concludes the 12 items that will come before you tonight. Yes, sir. I have uh, two questions. Uh, the first one goes to the uh, ordinance 17-393, uh, mm -hmm. where it says adoption of an ordinance confirming a transfer. Um, normally, it'll just say adoption of an ordinance transfer. And so when it says confirming, are you saying that it already occurred and now council has to go back and confirm? No, I would, I, 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 um, the titles and the um, language of a um, item in the city's manager's report is actually um, city attorneys, Mr. Miller, working with it. So I, I, I can't speak to well, yes, I'm asking, has this transfer already occurred? No, we have not done any transfer. Okay. That we're looking to, to do that tomorrow and once so these are is, adopted. This is for last year's budget? Yes. So we just had a presentation that the fire over time was 200. Oh, I'm, I, oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought this was um, the, um, I, I was on another, uh, thinking on, on uh, something about the schools. Um, at 17, I have it now. State what you're asking again. Okay, at 17, 3, 9, on page. I see it. I have it. Two. You're asking the it word confirming. Why is it ordinance confirming? confirming a transfer. Right. Normally it just says uh, ordinance I'll have transfer. it. I'll city. Um, um, would, you, would you go to the like term? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right, because they have been paid. Um, Typically, we would have come to council asking for the transfer because at the end of the year, um, the overtime was not posted until July. We did not realize it was going to be over. And so the overtime has been posted and the FICA benefits were posted and we became into a negative. And so therefore, while we didn't physically do a transfer, the account is in a negative position, so we have to do a transfer. So it's, it's um, uh, typically we would have asked council to make the movement, but we already paid the bills. So it, it's needed to uh, have that department not be in a negative position. So, so, you, so you can't expend from an account. I thought it was if it was over a hundred thousand, it had to get right. Council, right. council has to approve a transfer over a hundred thousand. So, so, in the general fund in total, the general fund is a whole, and so there's enough money there. No, just uh -huh. So, how how was this done without council approval? Um, that's why we're asking for approval mm -hmm. because we haven't done the transfer. We need to confirm that a transfer needs to be done. Typically, we would do it before we even posted the bill, before we paid the bill. But because the the overtime didn't come in until after, um, we it's behind the it's behind the curve. So I thought you said the transfer had already occurred. Um, we haven't done the physical transfer, but because we have to do it because the amount, the expenses have been posted, so. So the figure you gave us earlier of 225000 for overtime, now 
it's that figure 225 plus this amount yes so so they have incurred four hundred and ninety one thousand six hundred four no I'm sorry it's 225 plus uh, an additional amount to make up to the 266 so some of the FICA and the other benefits needed a transfer also so the 266 so the conference is the 225 yes, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. um, the other issue is um, 17395 and um, this is for council uh, I, I'm asking that council would consent to remove uh, item A from the agenda because Where is this uh, comp that's the compact between city council and I think it's already done Council members, the your packages have been updated. You yeah, printed okay. it before we updated. So this is That's all. been taken off. Oh, okay. You okay. have that. Right. You have that in your box. Okay. That's all. Right. Any other questions or comments? Good. Mayor, Vice Mayor, this concludes the presentation right. for tonight. Um, any comments on the public hearing? I know that's not part of your city manager's report. Uh, no. Okay. We'll hear about, hear that. Right. Uh, City Council liaison reports, and I'll start with Councilwoman Simmons. So, because I didn't have to okay. <clears throat> um, just want to give a, a small update. Um, with the Portsmouth Food Development Housing Authority, they did have an audit um, by the Clifton Larson Allen um, audit groups, and they reviewed such things such as their bank accounts. Um, Big re reconciliations, uh, financial statements, and of course their uh, information technology. Uh, they found that some things were in order, but they did also make some recommendations uh, for some changes uh, with them with that. But overall, they're looking pretty good with their internal processes. Um, they also have um, something that's good for the public. Um, they have been approved. Um, the board actually approved a resolution. Uh, for the what we know as the Section 8, um, it's the Section 8 Management Assistant Program. They're calling it CMAP. Um, so that will help to assist uh, 63 additional families that, who are seeking housing vouchers. Um, and so those were available um, June 1st through through June 30th. Um, that resulted in an additional 13,223 um, being added to their annual budget for Section 8 housing. And of course, we all know um, about the Shaping the Future Summit um, September 30th. Um, so that was announced. Uh, Brian Sweats uh, was uh, visiting um, at that meeting there and then also um, at the Planning Commission. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Uh, Mayor. Uh, well, our next Parking Authority board meeting is not till September the 28th. And the next meeting for the Hampton Roads Regional Jail Authority is October the 18th. So I won't have updates until after those meetings. I do want to bring one additional comment. I did mention to um, Dr. Patton, um, City Attorney uh, Solomon, and, and Mayor about the course of redevelopment housing authority. They have made some changes with their liaisons, um, how their liaisons attend uh, their meetings, of course, sitting in through the full meeting, but they have asked that the city uh, council liaison recuse themselves from their closed meeting. And that is of some concern. Of course, they want me to sit in as part of the city business, anything that they are doing to convey properties or buy and purchase. But after the city business is over, they've asked me to leave the meeting. So um, we have our city attorney will be looking um, into that and their bylaws to see if that's something, you know, that is of nature. Um, I have known for any other city council liaison to be uh, asked to recuse themselves from the closed session portion of a boards and commission. And I've also asked them about recording their meetings. Um, Mayor had asked that all boards of substantial um, size and interest for the community, PRHA, Planning Commission, EDA, be recorded or either uh, attend a meeting so the public can be informed of what's going on. They have said they're looking into their recording devices and they haven't followed up with that. So I'm requesting that we get more information on why I'm being asked to be recused from the meeting and also why they're not recording their meeting so that the public can be informed. That's the portion of redevelopment housing thought. Did they take a vote on that? Did they vote on that, or, or how did I that? was called to a special meeting when I was on vacation um, by the chair, Davy Smith, and their legal counsel, Karen James. And I went into a meeting on that Tuesday because um, I didn't get back to 
Virginia until that Monday, um, and they told me that their new executive director wanted to be able to get on board with their board, and um, they've asked me to recuse myself from the closed session part of the meeting after the city business is taken care of. So they said their personnel matters and any other business that they discuss in closed meetings, they don't want the council liaison to be included on that. And then also I was removed from the table because they have a, a square table. Dr. Whitaker, you know what their room looks like. And b because they are a uh, person who is now their administrative assistant taking the minutes, was not able to hear from the back row of the seat. So they've moved her to the table. So now I'm on the back row. Um, <coughs> Well, I, I can hear, but I'm looking around heads, and, you know, I'm not the tallest person in the room. And so, you know, and I'm balancing a notebook on my lap that I dropped several times. And, you know, so um, I think we may need to look at, you know, some additional space maybe in this conference room. We look, at, we look, look at some other things, because that's the portion of the Belton Housing Authority. You know, when, when, when the federal government got to be paid money back, we pay it back. No, no matter what, what happens there, we're, 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 holding the, we're holding the bag, so we didn't know what's going on. There and uh, I got serious. I got a serious problem with that. And, and if that board doesn't doesn't see the, the seriousness of that, maybe we need to re-examine some more things because that's that's for me that's a non-starter. Uh, every when, when they have issues, when the money's got to be paid, it's, it's our it's our business. So so when they go and close door and talk about those things, it's the, it's still our business because it's our money. And, and every dollar they get passes through this city, no matter where it comes from. It passes through here to, to to them, and no other board has ever, to my knowledge, when Elizabeth, you and Bill have been along to me, has ever. Have you ever heard that before? No, mm -hmm. never been asked for it. No. Okay, so, but Mayor, for me, we, we need to get into that, and that's a non-start. And if we, if we can't fix it with with this board, we, we know what to do. I I think. Uh, I think there are issues even deeper than that. Uh, I, I know uh, Dr. Patton. Uh, uh, shared with me the, the interaction between uh, the Hampton uh, Housing Authority and their city council. Uh, they're, they're part of the decision process, and, and things aren't uh, decided in absence of city council. And uh, uh, this latest thing, uh, I have a problem with the board or somebody with the housing authority uh, deciding not to prosecute for the theft of eight thousand uh, dollars. I'm glad our uh, Commonwealth attorney uh, went forward with it, did her own investigation, and got a true bill on four indictments. But that is not their money, uh, as the vice mayor just said. Their money is our money, is our citizens' money, and uh, uh, no one, when they have identified a theft should decide that they're not going to go forward and, and prosecute. That, that is completely alien uh, to me for the responsibility that that board has. Uh, so uh, I, th I, think, I think we, uh, at another setting, I, I think we need to go over uh, exactly what our relationship, what our responsibilities are, reference to the housing authority. I, it, you know, even earlier this year, uh, I understand uh, a, a business that was uh, interested in coming to uh, the Midtown area, uh, it, uh, just because a board member didn't particularly like mm -hmm. that particular type of food, uh, the board said, oh, okay, I guess we'll, we'll, we won't uh, entertain that. that. That is not uh, a healthy decision process. And, and mm -hmm. the the way they've treated one of our council members, uh, uh, that that just is further evidence that there's a disconnect. Well, Pierce, you only met with how many people? Two. So, so you don't know if the whole board voted or not. And they didn't. They um, did. I, I had two other board members to say they didn't know anything about. So, the, so, the, so the chair and the legal counsel, legal counsel, executive director. He was not in the room. So, the chair and legal counsel decided that you can't be in it. Correct. <laughs> All right. Mayor, uh, members of council, I have never been to a um, PRJ board meeting. I don't know where they're held, but um, maybe about three or four months ago, uh, the question was, why does the, the, why does the city have board meetings where the public can't sit down? 
and you know I'm thinking right here the public is sitting down and I said well every time we have a meeting economic development whatever uh, meetings the public there are chairs for the public sit down and the comment made well if you if you and I said I've never been go to PRHA I don't know if it's a small room uh, you could answer what well, seems as if the if the public, it's not enough seats or the room is too small. And so I, I, I just said, you need to call uh, TRJ because we don't set their room, so. Uh, Madam Clerk, they could meet the council chamber, could they not? They could meet in this they room. They could meet yes. in the, uh, anywhere. Yeah. Uh, listening to the discussion here, uh, does council want me to send the chairman a letter on my behalf expressing concern? Uh, and also uh, expressing about this for sure, but also expressing concern that um, their meetings are not accessible and ask them to, to change the venue. But if they're here or there, then you already have the video. You know, you know the letter is nice, Mayor, but I think I eyeball to eyeball would, would, okay. would, would, would be uh, appropriate. Because, because actually they disrespected a, a, a city council member. And that, that, I just got, I just got a problem in some, so I think as the leader of the council, you need to look at my eyes and, and, right. and, and say that's not, not acceptable. Do you? Okay. Thank you. HR TAC and HR PDC meets later this month, so I'll have a report at the next meeting. Uh, any other things for our agenda? Yes, sir. Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, members of the City Council, I just wanted to give you all some information. Uh, a month or so back when we were discussing uh, small cell 4G and 5G technology, there was a question asked about potential fiscal impacts. Uh, when Senate Bill 1282 was submitted, there was a fiscal impact statement. Several cities estimated their fiscal impact in, in terms of the loss of revenue to be somewhere in the range of uh, $200,000 to $100,000. Uh, that would have been the city of Danville gave an actual number, uh, Lynchburg, and the city of Roanoke. Some of the, uh, I believe Norfolk was asked, and they could not give a number, but they expected that it would be a reduction in revenue for the city. So I just wanted to report that back to you all. Yes, sir. What, what did they say? What the basis of the <coughs> revenue? Uh, much like the city of Portsmouth, when you have an application, there were fees associated with whatever background you had to uh, perform. Just like we have fees for our various services, uh, the city would have fees associated with uh, plan reviews and that sort of thing. So it would be the loss of, of those. Well, not the loss. The state law set the fee as opposed to its locality setting the fee. All right. Yes, sir. I have a follow up issue um, for council to consider from last night our discussion on the monument. And um, I know that there has been a uh, general discussion about the monument being moved to uh, Cedar Grove Park. Uh, in, in the interest of time, um, would, would it be, um, well not would it be, but uh, can we direct the um, engineering department to come back with some alternatives other than Cedar Grove, just in case Cedar Grove is not uh, going to be an available location so that um, when that issue comes, we will not have to waste time looking for alternative sites, but that alternatives would have already been investigated. Pardon me? Sorry. I, say, I don't think that's up to the engineering department. I well, I know that there were some studies that said so the ground and um, as far as the sturdiness. That, yeah, that, that's going to have to be done any place it's located because this is Hampton Roads and what right, has. Well, right, well, what I'm, what I'm saying is instead of us waiting and finding out maybe that Cedar Grove is not appropriate and then we would have to delay it again to look for another site if that can already be in place so that we would have potential alternatives. The next cemetery that's on that route, London Boulevard, is uh, Oak Grove, which is also a cedar, I mean, um, a city cemetery. Um, is it, um, is that what you're asking? Um, any, any other city 
cemetery site, if it's Oak Grove, City Park, just so that it would have already been investigated so we wouldn't have to delay looking okay. at all. There's nothing wrong with having alternatives, just in case. Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, members of the City Council, the team um, is all what we're, while we're talking about Cedar Grove, we're looking at possible three places in Cedar Grove, which has not been determined which of the three in there is the best. In addition, we are in discussions of other possible alternatives. This is just in the discussion phase. And as we presented last night, and I, I didn't say it when we presented six segments, there are teams that are working on each of the segments. Then the entire team will come back together after, before uh, this week is over. So you're already looking at our turn. We, facts. that's what I'm saying, okay. yes. Outside of Cedar Grove. Right now we're in Cedar Grove and we have three places we're vetting in Cedar Grove. We want to vet in Cedar Grove, three well, different locations. Right, well the issue I'm raising is what if goals aren't available. And this group will determine some other alternatives. Okay. That's what, they're, they, we're just doing a whole, as you saw, everything up there. So we're, we're, we're studying right now three locations. Okay, but they're all within Cedar Grove. They That's are. The, my, my, the question that I'm raising is asking council to consider and directing management to look at other sites outside of Cedar Grove just in case. If that's not an issue, well, council. Okay. Um, I don't have any problems with looking at other alternatives, but I think we need to focus as much as possible on Cedar Grove and try to make it work. Uh, that cemetery is the oldest. It is, it, it is like a museum. It's got um, graves from uh, veterans of every war, from the Revolutionary War to World War II. It's got 400 Confederate graves there, mm -hmm. so it would be a, an appropriate place for this uh, monument. Yeah, I, I agree. I just, um, I'm just saying, just in case. Yeah. Well, is it a consensus that, and it probably is it a consensus that if the three doesn't work out, we'll look at another alternative? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we more options. Yeah, but I'm saying those should be investigated now, not right. waiting about two. Now. These alternatives will they be presented in our September? We we this this going to take time, Doctor uh, Doctor Whitaker. It's it's not that you, we're going to be able to <coughs> go out and this is September and be able to tell the work that needs to be done to, to determine all of that which we showed last night on weight and this and all all of those things are being worked. Um, concurrently, but I, I cannot sit here and say on the 25th, it, we will not be back on the 25th of September with this information because it's it takes time. To, we're working it every day, but it takes time to all of what we share, ground, weight, this, that. We that This is science and engineering that we have to determine. Right. When will, well, will the three viable, the three sites at Cedar Grove, will we know by the 26th if those are viable? We've got to do this work up here on weight, this, all of that to determine right. the viability of, in, of, of any, the site. Of any site. Yeah. So, so I'm trying, what's the timeline? I, we, we're meeting. And we're going to come. We've got your. We've got your pert chart done. We're going to now start looking at time frame, timeline, with going forward. So I cannot say. What's the rush? No. Hold on. <laughs> I can't I can't answer. This is a council meeting. I don't, I don't understand yeah. the question. The question was, what's the rush? Okay. Let's let's uh, continue to work on those three sites. Would be my recommendation. <clears throat> Report back. We got this on the Monday night session. Right. He's yes. got on your legal well, part. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, I'll we'll come back with some update. And a closed session. Right. Meeting. Well, I, I, I know, I know, Mayor, you announced at the news conference that it was a December time frame. That would be my desire, Dr. Whitaker. But, like but at the same time, we need to make sure that we do 
the engineering that's in, that needs to be done to move that monument, how it's put together and how you move it and how you relocate it. And that was my issue yesterday that um, an RFP incorporating that as a scope of work um, for uh, the company to do could be appropriate in that case. And I don't see why that couldn't be done. Um, I understand your point, but it, you're not going to get a response because it's like asking someone to do an RFP to build a house. They're going to ask how, how big a house, whether or not it's got a garage, what type of foundation. They'll ask a lot of questions in order to do, uh, to give you an RFP. And, and, and they have that information because the, the monument is there. No, they don't. It, it's in. <coughs> The answers to those questions are in the work that Dr. Patton and her team put forth. And I want you, whatever we understand, this is not a delay, but we need to do this in order to move the monument. We need to understand all those aspects in order to get it done. I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure if the city has to do it. That's, that's my question I'm raising. It'll be done in a It's not going to be done free. Well, we know that that's part of the cost. Yeah. Right. And so I don't see why we could not at least put out an RFP to get that. It, it won't process. work. It won't work. It will not work. You're not going to get anybody to respond to an RFP that's not defined like that. Yeah. And we'll just waste time, and it's not going to work. Because I've been doing this type of stuff for four and a half decades, I know from experience, and it's gonna, it's gonna you can't end up in a failure, and we don't need a failure in this process. don't have a need for a closed session, so this is uh, the end of our agenda, and the full session is adjourned. And we'll reconvene at 7 in the regular session. And dinner service. Dinner service.